Welcome to our training on the history of private equity. This is a topic that is crucial to your understanding of how the private equity industry developed. This video will help you to understand where private equity investing came from. The history of private equity and venture capital and the development of these asset classes has occurred through a series of boom and bust cycles since the middle of the 20th century. Within the broader private equity industry, two distinct sub-industries, leverage buyouts and venture capital, experience growth along a parallel, although interrelated, tracks. Since the origins of modern private equity industry in 1946, there have been four major epochs marked by three boom and bust cycles. The early history of private equity, from 1946 through 1981, was characterized by relatively small volumes of private equity investment, rudimentary firm organizations, and limited awareness of and familiarity with the private equity industry. The first boom and bust cycle, from 1982 through 1993, was characterized by the dramatic surge in leveraged buyout activity financed by junk bonds and culminating in the massive buyout of RJR Nabisco before the near collapse of the leveraged buyout industry in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The second boom and bust cycle, from 1992 through 2002, emerged out of the ashes of the savings and loan crisis, the insider trading scandals, and the real estate market collapse and the recession of the early 1990s. This period saw the emergence of more institutionalized private equity firms, ultimately culminating in the massive dot-com bubble in 1999 and 2000. The third boom and bust cycle, from 2003 through 2007, came in the wake of the collapse of the dot-com bubble. Leveraged buyouts reach unparalleled size and the institutionalization of private equity firms is exemplified by the Blackstone Group's 2007 initial public offering. In its early years through roughly the year 2000, the history of the private equity and venture capital asset classes is best described through a narrative of developments in the United States as private equity in Europe consistently lag behind the North American industry. With the second private equity boom in the mid-1990s and liberalization of regulation for institutional investors in Europe, the emergence of a mature European private equity market has occurred. During the 1960s and 70s, venture capital firms focused their investment activity primarily on starting and expanding companies. More often than not, these companies were exploiting breakthroughs in electronic, medical, or data processing technology. As a result, venture capital came to be almost synonymous with technology finance. It is commonly noted that the first venture backup startup was Fairchild Semiconductor, which produced the first commercially practical integrated circuit. Funded in 1959 by what would later become Vinrock Associates, Vinrock was founded in 1969 by Lawrence S. Rockefeller, the fourth of John D. Rockefeller's six children, as a way to allow other Rockefeller children to develop exposure to venture capital investments. It was also in the 1960s that the common form of private equity fund, still in use today, emerged. Private equity firms organized limited partnerships to hold investments in which the investment professionals served as general partners and the investors, who were passive limited partners, put up the capital. The compensation structure, still in use today, also emerged with limited partners paying an annual management fee of 1-2%, to and a carried interest typically representing up to 20% of the profits of the partnership. The decade of the 1980s is perhaps more closely associated with leveraged buyout than any decade before or since. For the first time, the public became aware of the ability of private equity to affect mainstream companies and corporate raiders and hostile takeovers entered the public consciousness. The decade would also see one of the largest booms in private equity culminating in the 1989 leveraged buyout of RJR Nabisco, which would reign as the largest leveraged buyout transaction for nearly 17 years. In 1980, the private equity industry would raise approximately $2.4 billion of an annual investor commitments, and by the end of the decade in 1989, that figure stood at $21.9 billion, marking the tremendous growth experienced. The public successes of the venture capital industry in the 1970s and early 1980s, DEC, Apple, Genetech, gave rise to a major proliferation of venture capital investment. From just a few dozen firms at the start of the decade, there were over 650 firms by the end of the 1980s, each searching for the next major home run. While the number of firms multiplied, 
the capital managed by these firms increased only 11%, from $28 billion to $31 billion over the course of the decade. The growth of the industry was hampered by sharply declining returns, and certain venture firms began posting losses for the first time. In addition to the increased competition among firms, several other factors impacted returns. The market for initial public offerings cooled in the mid-1980s before collapsing after the stock market crash in 1987 and foreign corporations, particularly from Japan and Korea, flooded early-stage companies with capital. By the end of the 1980s, the excesses of the buyout market were beginning to show, with the bankruptcy of several large buyouts, including Robert Campo's 1988 buyout of Federated Department Stores, the 1986 buyout of the Revco Drug Stores, Walter Industries, FEB Trucking, and Eaton Leonard. Additionally, the RJR Nabisco deal was showing signs of strain, leading to a recapitalization in 1990 that involved the contribution of $1.7 billion of new equity from KKR. Additionally, in response to the threat of unwelcome LBOs, certain companies adopted a number of techniques, such as the poison pill, to protect them against hostile takeovers by effectively self-destructing the company if it were to be taken over. These practices are increasingly discredited. In the 1980s, FedEx and Apple Incorporated were able to grow because of private equity or venture funding, as were Cisco, GeneTech, Microsoft, and Avis. However, by the end of the 1980s, venture capital returns were relatively low, particularly in comparison with their emerging leverage bio cousins, due in part to the competition for hot startups, excess supply of IPOs, and the inexperience of many venture capital fund managers. Unlike the leverage buyout industry, after total capital raised increased to $3 billion in 1983, growth in the venture capital industry remained limited through the 1980s and the first half of the 1990s, increasing to just over $4 billion more than a decade later in 1994. The Nasdaq crash and technology slump that started in March 2000 shook virtually the entire venture capital industry as valuations for startup technology companies collapsed. Over the next two years, Many venture firms had been forced to write off large portions of their investments, and many funds were significantly underwater. The values of the fund's investments were below the amount of capital invested. Venture capital investors sought to reduce the size of commitments they had made to venture capital funds, and in numerous instances, investors sought to unload existing commitments for cents on the dollar in the secondary market. By mid-2003, the venture capital industry had shriveled to about half its capacity in 2001. As 2002 ended and 2003 began, the private equity sector was reeling from major losses in telecommunications and technology companies and had been severely constrained by tight credit markets. As 2003 got underway, private equity began a five-year resurgence that would ultimately result in the completion of 13 of the 15 largest leveraged buyout transactions in history. Unprecedented levels of investment activity and investor commitments, and a major expansion and maturation of the leading private equity firms. Thank you once again for your time and attention, and this is businesstraining.com, where you can earn a master's level qualification to make more money.